Come on inside here with us for a minute. It's raining outside, so we're going to spend as much time inside as we can on this video. And as I go around the corner, we get to what some might consider to be the first con. Hey, Howard here from 82 Maple. And uh, for current subscribers and viewers of this channel, the glasses are new, but hey, they're here today and gone tomorrow or close to it. I'm closing in on the time for cataract surgery and that means no contact lenses. So glasses it is. Uh, we're gonna talk about this little Lance 1172 camper, which has about a four foot overhang off the truck. 12 feet uh, total length here, another six feet up top, sitting on my Ford F-350 one ton dually. The perspectives I'm going to share are my perspectives and my perspectives only. And I'm doing this video because as I went through YouTube looking at uh, the pros and cons of truck and camper, uh, just wanting to make sure that the selection that we have is going to continue to serve us well compared to all the other offerings out there. I came across some pro and con videos that reach different conclusions than I did. And again, it's a very much a personalized experience. My experience and perspective comes from having owned a 24 foot class C motorhome, three class A motorhomes varying in length from 32 to 37 and a half feet. This truck and camper for the last nine years and a more recently purchased 20 foot travel trailer that for most of the year is more or less stationary. And hey, we've got a lot of content to cover in the next 12 or 13 minutes. So I'm going to unashamedly uh, uh, be referencing some of my notes. If this is the first time you visited this channel, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, welcome, first of all. And secondly, as the somewhat famous Canadian comedian Red Green used to say, if you don't find me handsome, hey, I at least hope that you find this content to be handy and helpful. So let's get into, we're gonna cover four cons and four pros. Uh, number one, come on inside here with us for a minute. It's raining outside, so we're gonna spend as much time inside as we can on this video. And as I go around the corner, we get to what some might consider to be the first con, and that is the jump up to the bed. Now the bed is wonderful. There's lots of closet space and, uh, and uh, space for uh, all sorts of things in compartments on either side of the bed, but there is considerable agility required in getting up and down and that may or may not be for you. And I say considerable agility because I end up having, I'm at that vintage where I end up coming in and out of here at least twice during the night. And that might disturb whoever is occupying the bed along with you as well. So I put that down as a bit of a con. The second con I would suggest is kind of related. It has a height issue attached. So we're headed straight back outside and don't worry, we'll come back in here in a little bit. Um, and this con involves these two 30 pound propane bottles. So you can see where this sits shoulder height on me. 30 pounds means 30 pounds of contents. The bottle itself weighs another 25 pounds. That means every time these need refilling, I have to loft 55 pounds or one third of my body weight up above shoulder height. Hey, good luck with that. And it's part of my incentive to stay fit. So is that a con or is that a pro? Let's go with the pro. I need to stay fit. Uh, number three, some truck modifications may be required. Here's why. You'll hear other presenters saying that an, uh, a vehicle of this weight and height, and again, this weight and height fits a large camper size. I define large camper as being over 3,800 pounds of dry weight and beyond truck bed length. And others will tell you that there can be a lot of sway with this. And you know what? They're right. 
um, I spec this uh, F-350 out with heavy duty everything. Heavy duty alternator, heavy duty, as heavy duty batteries as I could get in. Uh, I've since beefed those up so that I have uh, lots of charging power and lots of extra power uh, when boondocking or dry camping, as we often call it. I also got the he heaviest duty, if that's a correct English phrase, uh, in terms of suspension, and then got airbags under it, all before I picked this unit up from the dealer. On the way coming back from the dealer, I navigated a couple of roundabouts and was extremely uncomfortable with the side-to-side -side sway. And so I talked to a suspension expert, we added three overload springs under there. And if you know what an anti-sway bar is or a torsion bar, uh, the stock was either a 5 8 inch or 3 quarter inch. I don't recall which, but we beefed it up to a 1 and a quarter inch. You know what? That whole setup cost about $2,000. Problem solved. Well, problem solved after I got all new wheels and tires. Getting new wheels and tires, I'll go straight to what that did to enhance the experience. It uh, expanded the side-to-side -side stance by about four inches. The stock wheels were in about here. It expanded this all the way out. And up front, it added probably an inch and a half to the stance on each side. So we got about eight inches of increased total stance across the rear and at least three inches up front. Here's what that means. If you're navigating a curvy road, think Oregon coast, think California coastal highway. Coral can safely take this in to a corner where those little yellow signs for the suggested speed for passenger cars is maybe posted at 35 miles an hour. If she so chooses, she can go through that corner totally flat without sway, totally confident at at least five miles an hour over that posted speed. That's a dramatic difference from stock. It cost a few dollars, the comfort and the confidence it gives us on the road as they say, priceless. Bonus, the, uh, there's also been comments by owners of similar units that when boondocking, one often has to traverse uneven terrain, which means more of this side to side sway. So let me tell you where we're at on this. This unit is rated for a 16,000 pound gross vehicle weight. GVW. Totally loaded with propane, a full water tank. We've got a carrier up top there that packs um, uh, lawn chairs, uh, a camp table, uh, a mat for down here. Relatively light stuff, but total with the carrier weight itself, about an extra 150 pounds right up top. We recently traversed a corduroy road in to see a ghost town in Montana. And the corduroy road was rough. Can't do anything about that. It didn't matter what you were driving. That was a rough road. But it was also uneven and there wasn't the side to side sway that we've heard others reporting. So whatever it was that we did here, either singularly or in combination, really seems to have cured the problem. Hey, it's three days later from the footage that you've just been viewing. And as I'm editing this, I realize I forgot to mention what some folks view as a con and what I had meant to talk about as con number four, and that is overall height. So I've just put this little unit into where it's probably going to sit for most of the winter. And, uh, but when it's on the truck, uh, we're sitting just under 13 feet, which is totally legal. We've never come across a bridge, overpass, anything that is going to cause us any problem, even with that extra carrier up top. And uh, you know what? Uh, when I was a kid and first starting to drive stuff for my dad, uh, he instructed me, son, 
always do a circle check of anything you're going to drive. That'll get it embedded in your brain that you're not driving uh, maybe a regular vehicle or it'll give you a sense of the shape and size of what it is you're going to be operating. And uh, as you're moving, always be looking forward, be looking back, look right, look left, look up and look down. And uh, you know what? Uh, if you've not operated a vehicle the size of a truck and camper or a Class C or Class A motorhome before, uh, you know, paste it on the dash. There's no shame in that. Uh, it's all about being safe. Coral and I have been using uh, the truck and camper now a fair amount over the course of the last nine years. And yeah, you have to watch for building overhangs. Uh, watch those signs uh, uh, in out of the way service stations to make sure you're not gonna remove their canopy. But uh, we've never encountered a problem, uh, you know, along any major route with heights. And uh, most service stations, even in out of the way places, have a lane for overheight vehicles, but it's just always about being conscious of what's above you and again if you have any misgivings uh, about uh, uh, having that consciousness put a uh, sticky note on the dash look up <laughs> there you go i hope this isn't uh, the type of con that would prevent you uh, single-handedly from at least considering seriously a truck and camper combination Let's get on to those four pros, uh, a couple of which are probably fairly obvious to you. We have the ability to separate the vehicle from our living quarters. And I tend to keep vehicles and implements for a long time. My dad was also that sort of guy. He got a little single axle camping trailer way back in the day. And honest to goodness, that trailer was in better shape the day he sold it 25 years later than it was the day he bought it. And uh, so if we should ever have a situation where the F-350 becomes what I consider to be unreliable in terms of embarking on a 5,000 uh, kilometer, that would be 3,000 mile journey like we're planning for this coming June, uh, I can trade it off. That would be no reason to, there would be no reason to suggest that the camper isn't perfectly suitable. And uh, the other thing is, I tend to modify whatever it is I purchase to suit our uh, lifestyle and what we need. So I've added coat hooks. We've modified cupboards to our needs. We'll show you a uh, at least one ad additional modification when we go inside. Oh yeah, we also added a Starlink mount up, up top. All of those little things seem like small things till you have to do them all over again on a brand new unit. It's important to understand that neither of these two component pieces are flawless. Coral had a situation when boondocking uh, and horse camping where I had to come back for business. She was left with her, with our brother-in-law and sister-in-law and uh, the slide on the driver's side failed to retract. Fortunately, brother-in-law Jerry is pretty handy and was able to diagnose the situation, redneck a fix so that Coral could retract the slide. Had she been unable to do that and had Jerry not had the skill to facilitate that, Coral could have easily dropped the camper, come back to civilization with the truck and the horse trailer and left the camper to deal with on another day. And conversely, I recall the day that we rolled in close to our destination RV park and there was a significant and urgent engine issue on one of the class A motorhomes that we had. And as a result, we spent overnight and nearly a full day in the parking lot of a dealership that was facilitating the necessary fix. How much better would it have been to be able to just drop the camper at the RV park, separate the drive unit, take it in, 
let them take their time, get it right the first time while we enjoyed the water park. Uh, that would have been much more pleasant than hanging out in the parking lot with four little boys under the age of 12. And of course, the obvious pro to having separate units, if we decide to set up base camp at a single location for two or three days or longer, super easy to separate the truck from the camper and go visit the local attractions. We can also park just about anywhere, anytime. A Costco parking spot, a Walmart parking spot. On our last little trip to Yellowstone, it was interesting. It didn't matter whether it was the Revelstoke Railway Museum or hanging out and trying to find lunch somewhere near the Buffalo Bill Museum in uh, Cody, Wyoming. There would literally be a mile of tow unit and tow trailer units lined up down along the road with the occupants needing to walk up to a mile for lunch. Meanwhile, we could pull into a spot that was as close to the front door as we could have had, had we been driving just a regular passenger automobile. That's gotta be worth something. Quite aside from what I just described, Coral and I tend to be pretty spontaneous and don't want to be beholden to a schedule any more than necessary. So often we won't bother reserving a spot in an RV park. So when we pull into the RV park late in the day, if there's any spots available at all, it'll be the short spots for units under 30 feet. This last trip, we pulled into the very smallest spot uh, or into a little RV park in a place I don't even remember the name of it and uh, got the very last spot. This is a 26 foot unit, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. We got a 22 foot spot that an obliging RV park attendant said, hey, if you can wedge that unit into the spot so that people can still drive past your front bumper with ease, it's all yours. Done. By having a separate drive unit from living accommodation, you can also choose your powertrain. Coral and I chose four wheel drive. And again, we've been in a host of situations where we really found that four wheel drive, if not necessary, certainly convenient and left us going into a situation or out of a situation with confidence. And one example was a little ghost town that we visited in Montana on that corduroy road I was describing. Uh, the four wheel drive didn't smooth the corduroy road, impossible. What it did is it made it smoother. Having the front tires pulling along with the rear made a significant difference. Okay, last point, pro number four. It's just the right amount of space for two people forever. Coral and I wouldn't actually know what to do with more space. We can get everything in here. Come on back inside for a minute. In here, with both slides out, we have about 180 square feet of living space. It's well-designed space. It's compact, it's convenient, and it really isn't a stretch for us to get everything into the great indoors. In fact, we have such an abundance of space that we moved the bicycles from outside. Uh, one reason being some vandals one night decided to help themselves to our bicycles. They weren't successful, but hey, it was a warning for us. And uh, we really don't use this back space. If there was more than the two of us, we might. But I built a little bracket back here, one of those little fixes I was telling you about. I need to apply some stain for that. That was done last minute before this past trip. And uh, um, yeah, they ride there securely all day and we still have more than enough space. Uh, well, and there you have it. This unit is not spotlessly clean and shiny today. We just came off of that uh, 5,000 kilometer, 3,000 mile trip to Yellowstone and back. And I just thought there's no better day to shoot this video than today. 
I hope you found this to be useful. Thanks for journeying with us while we work hard, play hard, and try to find the adventure that is in every single day. We hope for you at least a portion of the joy that our journey is giving us.